In this video we're going to be talking about probability distributions. Um, before we do that we need to define uh, what, what's known as a random variable. So this is typically written with either a capital or lowercase letter x. Um, x is a random variable if it has a single numerical value based on the outcome of some procedure um, that's by chance. So it's, it's a variable in that we, it has po different possible outcomes or it does, has different possible values. We don't necessarily know what number it is. But based on some sort of procedure, um, it's going to have one answer. It also has to be numerical, so that will be important in some of these examples. So a simple example, um, if you're flipping a coin 10 times, one possible random variable would be to have x be the number of heads. So our number of heads could be, well, you could have 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up until 10. So this is, um, it has a single numerical value. You can't have 7 heads and 12 heads. Uh, and it's based on a, a chance procedure. So we don't know exactly how many heads we would have, but there will be an exact determination. Another example, if you're manufacturing parts in a factory, um, you could have a random variable that represents the number of defective parts on a given day. So the reason we like to deal with random variables in statistics is that we're often dealing with quantities that are not fixed. If you're, if you're manufacturing parts, you might have a set rate of how many you think might be defective, but it's going to vary from day to day. Um, it varies by chance. So we have to be able to deal with these um, randomly assigned variables. So if we have a random variable, a probability distribution is basically something that tells us what the probability of each outcome is um, for our random variable. So for a simple example here, if we're flipping two coins and our random variable is the number of heads, well, we could have zero heads, one head, or two heads. Those are the only possible outcomes for this random variable. And our probability distribution would say, okay, for each of these outcomes, what is the probability? Well, if you write out the sample space for flipping two coins, the probability of getting zero heads is one-fourth. The probability of getting one head is one-half. The probability of getting two heads is one-fourth. So this here would be our probability distribution for this particular random variable. When we're talking about random variables, there's three requirements that have to be met. First of all, um, whatever x is that we're dealing with, it has to be a random variable. So keep in mind what I mentioned before, that your random variable has to be numerical. So we couldn't have this random variable be, say, the outcome on the second flip being heads or tails. That's not a numerical value, so that wouldn't work. The second requirement is that each probability that we're getting has to be between 0 and 1. Um, and that's just because probabilities have to have that quality. I can't say that the probability of getting 0 heads is 12. That just doesn't make sense. So check, make sure that your probabilities actually make sense. They can actually be 0 or 1 themselves, um, but that's pretty unlikely. And the third requirement is that the sum of all the probabilities is 1. So this is important. When we add up the probability of each of these outcomes, it has to come up to a total of 1. And that's what tells us that we're dealing with all the possibilities here. There's not something that we've left out. Um, if it goes up to more than 1, then that means our probabilities aren't making sense. So we have an example here. We're looking at five randomly chosen domestic flights. And our random variable is the number of those that arrive on time. So since there's only five flights, our possibilities are 0 through 5. And this um, table here is telling us the probability of each one of these outcomes. So the first question we would ask is, is this a probability distribution? Well, it looks like it, but we have to check our three requirements. So the first is, is x actually a random variable? Well, it is. Um, if we actually looked at an, a five flights, we would definitely be able to determine for sure which one of these outcomes we got. Um, and this is a numerical value. Now we look at our probabilities. 
we have to check and make sure that these are actually between 0 and 1, and all of them are. So these do make sense as probabilities. And then we would have to check that when we add them all up, we get 1. Now if you add these up on your calculator, you'll see that it actually comes out to 0 0.999. This is just because these probabilities are rounded. Um, you'll notice the little 0 with the plus. This means that this is actually bigger than 0. Um, but because we're rounding to three decimal places, the number is too small to see here. So if you get something like this, this is okay. We can treat this as being a sum of one. So this meets all three criteria, uh, which means that it is a probability distribution. When we have a probability distribution, there's a couple different things that we would like to be able to compute. The first is the mean, um, or something. sometimes this is called expected value for these types of distributions. And what this is, our mean, is sort of the average number we would expect to see um, if we did this uh, over and over. So we know that in, among five flights we might have none on time, we might have three on time, we might have all of them be on time. Um, there's different possibilities, but we might want to know on average how many will be on time. And that's exactly what our mean or our expected value is. So here's our, our formula here. Remember that uh, capital Greek letter sigma here means sum. So we're going to add up x times the probability of x um, for each of the, the values that we've got. So from the table above, I'm taking uh, x times the probability of x for each of these possible outcomes, do all the multiplications, and then finally add up the total. Um, and this is our expected value here. So one thing to be careful of is that the expected value is not, in this case, how many flights are going to be on time. Of course we can't have 4.022 flights on time. This isn't a whole number. But this is just saying if we did this over and over and over again, this would be the average number. This is the expected number. So we should, should expect that some will, sometimes there will be more than four on time, sometimes there will be less than four on time, but on average it's just over four flights would be on time for this um, particular distribution. The other piece we may want to compute with a, standard, er, with a probability distribution is standard deviation. So there's two different formulas. Um, these will give you the same answer. You can use either one. This one on the left should look somewhat familiar. Here there's having you take the x value, subtract the mean, so taking the difference, squaring it, and then in this case we multiply by the probability, add them all up, and take a square root. This should look very familiar um, to what we did when we did standard deviation before. The second one is just an alternate form of the formula, and this one's a little bit easier to compute. So if you're computing a standard deviation in this section, I would recommend just using this one, but again, it doesn't really matter. So again, to parse this formula, we're going to add up um, each of the values squared times its probability, and then once we've added all those up, we're going to subtract the mean squared, the mean that we computed just a second ago, and then finally take a square root. So here are my computations. I've got each value squared times its probability, and then I added up all of those. Here's the total here. And then once that sum is done, I subtracted our mean squared, and then from that result I took a square root, and our final number here, this would be the standard deviation. So again, this means sort of on average, um, the number of flights that are on time is going to vary by approximately one, just a little less than one here. The final piece we want to look at in this section is um, how to determine unusual results. So when we have a random variable, of course it can have many different values, and we can look at the probability of each value. But in order to determine whether a particular value is high or low, um, we have to make some sort of determination here. And the guideline is um, a value is unusually high, say we're talking about seeing four flights that are on time. If the probability of getting that number or higher is less than or equal to 0 0.05 or 5 percent. Similarly, unusually low is if that number or lower 
the probability is 0.05%. It's very important that we're including this or lower or, or higher piece though. Um, so for example, the probability of getting exactly two flights on time um, is one thing, but we would want to know what's the probability of getting two f or fewer flights on time to determine whether two was unusually low. So an example to kind of see why this is, um, imagine you flip a coin a thousand times and you come up with 501 heads. And we want to know, is this unusually high? Well, just intuitively, we would say that this is not very high. Um, if you're flipping a coin a thousand times, we would expect about half of them to be heads, um, but it doesn't have to be exactly half. So we would expect around 500, but 501 seems like a pretty typical answer. But if you look at the probabilities here, the probability that you get exactly 501 heads is actually fairly small. This is about 2.5%. And if you think about it, it shouldn't be too surprising because there's a lot of different outcomes here. You could have 502 heads or 499 heads, um, and all of those are, are fairly likely, but because there's so many different possible outcomes, the probability of getting exactly 501 is going to be relatively small. However, if we do our probability that we get 501 or more, or that the number of heads is 501 or greater, this probability is nearly 50%, right, 48.7%. So because this is greater than 5%, um, we would say that no, this is not unusually high. But it's important that we consider um, 501 or more and not just exactly 500 to make this determination. Here's the problem for you to try. Um, we're looking at testing six cars for safety, and our random variable here is the number of cars that fail one or more tests. So here's the table. Um, you're going to answer these questions about this random variable, and that will be it for this video. Thanks. See you next time.